Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Armen Grigorian, Vice President of the Center for Policy Studies in Yerevan. Uh, let me welcome, first of all, our today's expert, uh, Maciej Sadowski, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Startup, Hub, Startup Hub Poland, who will make today's presentation on IT sector, e governance, and information society development. And this is a part of a project supported by the International Visegrad Fund. And uh, after the presentation, we'll have a discussion as well. And we have three experts from the Ministry of High Tech Industry Development of Armenia, and some more may join in the meantime. And now I would like to ask Mache to begin with the presentation. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Uh, once I learned about, about your project, I was very happy, uh, not only because uh, Armenia is one of the countries that I am uh, quite often uh, in, and before COVID I participated in several conferences. I also have friends for Armenia who are working in Poland and developing IT uh, solutions, especially in deep tech sector, but also because uh, um, I run foundation, um, as the chairman describes, a Startup Hub Poland Foundation, that main mission is to bring international talents to Central Eastern Europe and help us as Central Eastern Europeans to appear on the global um, radar, on the global stage of uh, high-tech ventures and high-tech solutions. Uh, today, I was asked in particular to cover two topics. One is the e-administration, or if you prefer e-governance in Poland, as a potential example, as a potential interesting um, source of uh, case study for Armenia, uh, and also the sector of ICT, um, connectivity, um, computer science. So I, I will also give you some understanding on the startup and high-tech ecosystem and trends, as, as well as venture capital trends, because in my deep opinion, and I, I will already reveal the, uh, the fundamental um, summary of my, of my presentation, uh, in order to have good e-administration e services and uh, good startup sector, you need to, every country needs to attract lots of local and international capital to let talents work on this solution, to let talents develop their technological um, uh, soft, they, their, their software and technological um, products in given country. So having said that, I would like just to, again, to, to, thank, to thank you again for inviting me. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Chairman, uh, how much time would you like me to refer? And then how much time would you like to devote for potential question and answers? Well, if uh, 40 minutes or so presentation will be fine, but uh, if, if needed, you need longer. And about the same amount of time for comments and questions. Lovely. Okay, I understand and I will comply. Uh, let me share the screen then. I hope you will see it very well, just in a second. Um, I need to understand how do I... Um, all right, I believe that should work. And you should see already the, the first slide, which is e-governance, information, society, startups, and high-tech market in Poland at a glance. Of course, in half of an hour, it is impossible for any human being to refer the whole development that we observed, that we experienced and enjoyed in Poland within last years. Uh, of course, if I've been asked by you to summarize the development of this sector just one year ago, just 11 months ago, my presentation would be very different from what I have prepared. Because maybe I will start with an anecdote. I heard it in one of the conferences that takes place online in Poland among big ICT corporations. And uh, one officer from one corporation asked another, and it's a true story. So uh, tell me, let's call him Michael. Tell me, Michael, who is responsible in your corporation for digital transformation? And the other gentleman, the Michael, answered COVID-19. So uh, it is true that COVID-19 was the major 
catalyze a catalyst the major um, accelerate acceleration element for our uh, e-governance e-administration services and solutions um i also probably should uh, exploit 20 seconds in uh, introducing myself. Not only I work in Startup Hub Poland, where I'm a co-founder and CEO for last nine years, I am also a chairman of a committee for high-tech uh, innovation and inclusivity of Polish Chamber of Commerce. I'm also, um, I also belong to the National Chamber of uh, uh, National uh, Development Chamber next to President of Poland. Uh, my role there is to actually give lots of criticism towards um, legislation, towards new strategies, also, also, but not exclusively concerning e-administration and how, how the government, uh, either the general government, the country government or local governments can communicate in a very accessible and fast way with um, citizens who really really very much uh, complained in last years for the uh, quality level and uh, saturation of uh, e-solutions in their lives. Uh, we were, especially my generation, I'm 36 years young, um, we were complaining that lots of things in business, in our normal administration procedures are enable, unachievable uh, online. We can only go to the physical office, meet a physical person, which is always nice, but very often time consuming. And uh, that was one of the reasons why our administration decided to speed up in this very, in this very element. Uh, I... I'm uh, sorry, can I ask a question before uh, you will start the presentation? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, Mr. Sadowski, am I pronouncing your surname right? Perfectly, as if you were <laughs> Polish. Uh, thank you for your time and your presentation that you are going to show us. Uh, I would like to be in touch with you later because uh, the, the several topics that you mentioned are very essential for our government. And as you have already that experience, uh, can I get your email or um, telegram contact us or some details uh, so forth I can contact you? Most certainly, Madame. I will. Uh, I, I have scratched all the contact information uh, in my last slide, eighteenth slide. But also, uh -huh. I will. I will make sure that after I um, I uh, conclude my presentation, I will also write on on the chat window of this Zoom conversation of this Zoom seminar my add my maybe uh, telephone number, which enables uh, WhatsApp and uh, Telegram, and we will be in, in touch, of course. And th yes, thank thanks you a lot. Your, thank you for, for your interest. And Maciej, perhaps you could also send the presentation file to me and I would yeah. share. With yes, you. that would be nice too. I will do it with a pleasure because in some slides, and I will show you already, I also prepared links for you. So if anybody is interested, in particular domain, you can simply access the, the data and reports provided by our specialists, our, I, I mean, Polish specialists, Polish government or NGOs, or sometimes uh, some journalists specialized in certain field. So um, I, I believe, uh, of course I will do that. And I believe it will be a good tool for some of you just to explore topics because in 25 minutes, already 25 minutes, I will not be able to, to give you anything else apart from the general overview of the situation in Poland in this respect. Because I was even surprised when I prepared myself for this meeting, I was checking what kind of new uh, electronic tools we have in Poland. Some of them, of course, I know, and I gladly use them in my normal routine life, business or private life. Um, or, but uh, there are also some new um, tools that I haven't been aware of, so I needed to study. This is only an example of how fast the number and the deep of uh, e-saturation um, or e-solutions is uh, present right now in Poland. I was honestly surprised as a Polish citizen. Um, so with, with a pleasure, I will connect. I will let you know all of my connection contacts and uh, um, channels that I use. Of course, email on the first place, the telephone number as well. Uh, but also, I will send you the presentation, yes, of course. 
So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to attract your attention on this slide because this slide, it, it's not mine, actually. I borrowed it from, from Digital Governance Fact Check 2019. It's a European Union um, method to monitor the development of e-solutions in every European Union member state country. And if you follow the link that I have uh, also provided on the bottom of this slide, and you will get it, you will get it. You can see two kinds of expression of this data. One is infographic, very handy, very useful if you want to talk in a very short format like this one, or an adva advanced one with, uh, with a comments, normal report, normal written report, of course, available online. And I borrowed this first slide to show you where exactly Poland is in comparison to the average of European Union. And already I need to admit that we are not, um, we haven't reached European Union average. So on the beginning, you might have this impression that Poland maybe is not a great example for Armenia because uh, we are not the best in uh, e-administration in European Union. But if I show, if I could show you the, this, the same graph, unfortunately it's unavailable in European Commission websites, uh, five years ago, you will see just maybe not a desert, but you will see a very unpleasant picture uh, where we did not have uh, lots of... Hello, hello. Okay, I had a lag for a second. Uh, all, no matter the fact that we are not yet in European Union average, we are um, significantly improving this uh, this sector of services, and uh, uh, still it's far from Scandinavia, it's far from Gen Germany, uh, or it's uh, far from Great Britain. Already not in Europe. Mm. Mr. Chairman, can I just ask you technically, can you hear me well? Uh, yes, sometimes the voice is cut, you know, for a few seconds. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry for that. I uh, checked the, the strongest internet connection before our meeting and I thought everything is going to be okay. Uh, but uh, uh, if only you want me to... Uh, there is yet another interruption. I am I am back with you. Um, the I think the problem was uh, the Zoom. Uh, it just kicked me out. Uh, I will show the. I will share the screen again, uh, unless you see the screen. Can you see the screen, Mr. Chairman? Yes, the same. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Ah. Okay, okay, this, that, this slide is important. So our- um, I don't see the slide, honestly. Uh, yeah, you stopped sharing actually right now. Okay. I'm terribly sorry. Um, I, I believed I knew Zoom very well, but there are some problems uh, here on my side with Zoom. I hope you can see the slide already. And uh, the highlighted element I put on the top of this slide is the assumptions for the strategy for artificial intelligence in Poland. Although it's the we are not on that, uh, we are not on that same page. We see the the very first page. Really? Yeah. What about now? Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, now we see it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, no matter the fact that this strategy is dedicated for artificial intelligence, it contains a lot of um, elements related to our e-government um, services, services for, for citizens and especially for patients. Um, we, didn't, we didn't know in 2018 that the COVID will be such a problem. We didn't know at all about COVID, but luckily our government has prepared some, 
some elementary uh, fundaments for uh, the um, transition from the very paper-based country into digital-based country. Um, as I told you, answering the, um, uh, the question of, of one of our colleagues, uh, I listed the most important um, legislation adopted by Poland from the level of European Union Commission, of European Commission. And these, uh, by the way, may, maybe one quite frank remark, being in European Union gives a lot of value. One of the value that is often underestimated and nobody talks about it, maybe today it's a good floor to mention that, is that you follow a general legislation of half of the continent. And it's really great because I cannot promise, I cannot say if uh, my country will be able to produce its own policies in such advanced level alone, working separately. Because of the fact that in European Union, we have this European Union citizenship, it also helps me and my colleagues from abroad who are coming to Poland or who want to work in Poland to benefit from the fact that uh, they can use uh, the same kind of signature to submit some files or some forms to our government or, or municipality. So um, here I need to make kudos towards European uh, Commission and European Union because it really helps a lot in advancing with the, our struggles to become more electronically based. And here in this slide, and please confirm if you can, if you have seen the switch of slides right now. Uh, yes. Yes. And here I mentioned few most important digital um, infrastructure that we have um, created in Poland recently. And uh, my idea was to give you a um, blimp of understanding how broad those instruments, those elements of our infrastructures are. So first of all, and most importantly, gov.pl. Gov.pl is a website that I use every week, probably 20 or 30 times. Not only because I'm looking for information there, like uh, 46 million people um, in, 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 uh, in recent, uh, in recent uh, months, of 2020, but also because I can um, submit several, several documents that beforehand I needed to go to the post office and send. So GovTech, let's imagine it's like a hub. It's one one stop shop, a place which contains all the important information about e administration and Poland. And if if and if it does not contain certain information, this website definitely directs you, navigates you towards certain services. So in my opinion, if I were new in Poland, if I didn't have touch with, contact with the internet beforehand, I would definitely start with this website. By the way, I want to mention that in our government, there is a unit called GovTech, GovTech, two words, GovTech, and I will have a slide or information about that. I call it for my own purposes, a UX, user experience branch of our government. These are very young people, even younger than me, who are determined to make all of this legacy of e-administration accessible for people. Because sometimes the public officer thinks the service is very good prepared, very well designed, but people do not understand how should they maneuver there? How should they um, go with certain topics? And these people, are um, the, the, the mission of them is to make it as accessible in terms of user experience design as possible. And uh, just to go with the list very shortly, apart from GovTech, uh, you have also dane.gov.pl. Dane in Polish, it means data. It's just a Polish word for data. So imagine it's data.gov.pl, which is a portal for open data. Any actor, any... Um, um, stakeholder can access this portal to get some publicly available data for his or her purposes. The registr registry of sexual crimes, new topic in Poland. So beforehand, people needed to use uh, mail, normal paper mail or call this institution. Right now, there is a special registry actually for everything. I just use the sexual crimes registry because it, uh, it is one of the newest um, example of uh, our our tools, e-tools. Um, and uh, 
please please think with me for a second lots of young people and generally speaking people in poland we have everybody has a smartphone i think it's a general not only for europe but for africa even africa is great in this respect uh, people People don't have a bike, but they have a smartphone. So it's far easier to report things like sexual abuse uh, or any kind of discrimination if you can use your smartphone. Because in very delicate situations, you cannot just pick up your phone and call to the inspector and complain or report a certain situation. But when you write, it's very um, in intimate. Nobody, nobody is observing what you are typing. So. Um, the distance between administration and people really decreased. Mm, really. I'm sorry, can you a little bit describe how that uh, service works? There is certain number, so if there mm -hmm. uh, someone is sexually abused, they just message or text how it's working. Can you please a little bit explain? <laughs> Yes, only a little bit because I'm not a I'm not an expert in every of this of these tools. I've never reported any sexual crime myself, so I know only this instrument from the description, from the general description, and I also know how it worked beforehand. So beforehand, we just uh, we just had an um, telephone hotline where people could call and probably whispering. They were just reporting the uh, given situation. And right now, because there is a certain form, uh, people just can access special inspectors, officers who are helping to uh, solve sexual crimes and decrease their numbers. They are helping with, uh, they are helping online. Uh, the track of your request is being monitored. So there is a special portfolio of cases. And please also, maybe this is an important element, Please also imagine how much it helps uh, the administration to, uh, set, to identify the um, sexual pred predators in, in, in Poland, for example. Um, it's, uh, uh, people are moving, people are going from one city to another, and thanks to that, the map of the potential dangers is, is far more adequate and far more uh, precise. Um, the, another, another element that I actually tried several weeks ago is ID card with an electronic layer. Um, this is a good one because uh, you need to have in Poland this, um, you know, this uh, plastic ID. You need, you need to have it and it's useful in European Union. But also this electronic layer allows you to, uh, it's like, it's actually very similar to bank debit or credit card, virtual credit card. You can just have one, one good uh, proof of your identity online. And uh, there are also discussions about, uh, it's not a topic of, of my presentation today, but there are huge discussions about uh, also applying blockchain technology in uh, identification, in transactions, and in notary certificates. So for example, if I want to sell my apartment, and I have a buyer who is willing to give me the price and pay to me, uh, normally I need to go to the notary and I need to pay usually around three, four, five hundred uh, euro. In Poland we have other currency, it's called Polish Zloty, but I'm giving you euro uh, exemplification just for better, uh, for better calculation. So it is quite expensive, only for a very, I don't want to use the word stupid, but for a very basic services, which is giving a stamp by the uh, state of Poland that these transactions took place and the ownership of this apartment change, uh, changed. So um, the blockchain experiments, probably if you invite me next year or maybe in one and a half year, I will be ready to give you information about uh, blockchain saturation in e-administration. Um, there, is, there are also some digital government services, and I need to speed up because Mr. Chairman allows me to speak 30 minutes. I, I may be a little bit longer, but uh, I, will, I don't want to, I have many slides. So. Yeah, please take your time. It's uh, not a set limit, actually. Okay, okay. Um, digital government services uh, also intensified in last year. My favorite one, you can find on the very button of this um, slide. Your I'm, I'm sorry, can, can I ask a question? Of course. Um, regarding the ID card, for example, uh, the transaction is being done online between the buyer and seller before going to notary, and that part is digital too? 
this is the plan it is not yet available i just mm -hmm. told you to give you not uh, a, a pack of facts but also mm -hmm. i wanted to show you the timeline logics so there are yeah. works right now in the sector especially in private sector to create such services and yes yes once it will be done it will work exactly as you described ma'am mm, okay thank you thank you and this digital uh, government services for for business especially and for citizens as well for taxpayers the last one on the list your epit electronic pit private income tax formula this is just marvelous this is this is amazing uh, citizens can uh, go online check what are their private income tax prediction pred prediction for a given year and of course they can correct their uh, submission. I, I can manually change some data, but the data are sourced from my employer. The data came from the company that I worked uh, and uh, these data are being, pro uh, uh, being processed by algorithms and by simple equations that show how much money shall I pay for uh, income tax. Um, the, why it's great because I have no responsibility just by accepting what the government told me I need to pay. So there is no risk for me, a normal private person, to be wrong with my uh, income declaration, uh, tax income declaration, which is a new thing. It works only for the last year from 2020. And I need to say I'm a big fan of it already. I don't need to buy expensive accountants uh, support. I don't need to bother my colleagues or friends who are uh, well educated in accountants. Um, the taxation system in Poland is quite complicated and uh, that saved probably 10 hours uh, of every of every interaction. M maybe I'm exaggerating, but definitely 10 hours a year uh, of uh, just filling in your papers for taxation. But please also take a look at the left uh, uh, side of the slide, e prescription. Um, I, I used it for the first time this year during COVID time and uh, honestly it took me just a few minutes to contact to fill in my application form, um, submit with my electronic signature which state provides, it is not a service provided by a company, private company, I, I could use it but I need to pay a lot. But my, com uh, by, by my country provides also a very affordable, I believe it's few slots, like few, few coffees, really, one, one dinner probably. The co I don't remember, but it's super, super cheap. Um, I have my own um, signature that I can just ask for prescription and uh, the prescription is being placed in the whole system. So every, apot uh, every pharmacy, every doctor can see it. And what is more, uh, I can visit my doctor right now, thanks to thanks to COVID in a way. I, otherwise, I would probably wait for another three years for this to happen. But I can visit my doctor online. And, and I visited doctors three times in, within last year. And uh, the longest time I waited for a doctor was three minutes. Why? Because I, I live in Warsaw. I'm Warsaw dweller, the, city, the capital of Poland. But I've never talked to a doctor from my city. I talked with doctors from smaller cities because the internet system allowed them to contact me and provide me the medical basic service, which was uh, research, diagnosis, some testimony of my health situation and e-prescription. So please imagine if you have a saturated city, Erevan, for, for, for example, where all doctors are super busy, thanks to this, only this system, not, not only your patients can get very fast assistance online, but also uh, doctors from smaller cities where there are no nothing to do for them because they have what 2000 patients and nobody's ill today and they are just sitting at home or at the off in the office in the cabinet and doing nothing so this one i also checked myself and i need to tell you that it's uh, um, it's a huge advantage in terms um, of e digitalization in poland for normal people like myself the the uh, the increase of quality was really uh, significant. I'm and sorry, just one question. Yes. Uh, you are the one who is choosing the doctor, yes? Not, it's just randomly giving no. you the doctor. Uh, no, just, no, 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 no. Yes, this... because you raised the topic that uh, 
doctors from the city uh, have much more free uh, windows to, um, to, to accept. Uh, in this case, that's why I'm asking. No, so um, it, it is different. The system, the system itself, the online system selects available consult, cons sorry, doc doctor, medical doctor, but right now I should rather say consultant for me. So I don't know which doctor will talk to me, whether it's doctor from Krakow or from Warsaw or from other smaller city or a village. So the system checks who is available right now and who can contact me as soon as possible. So it also, it, not, it's, it, it, it does not only help me as a patient to get my service very fast, but it allows doctors for very small cities to have a patient like myself. I would never be their patient otherwise. I would never go to small village just to meet doctor. And right now I can do that. And of uh, course- uh -huh. On one hand, this is great. But on the other hand, if you have like a certain specialist whom you want to turn, it's up to you, yes. If, if you just choose the doctor to whom you just want to uh, um, ha have your online visit, then you are working with him. If you don't, then the system is just randomly uh, checking the uh, doctor who is available for the moment, right? Yes, this is correct. This is correct. I was only uh, referring here to basic medical support, which is, uh, which is, um, oh, sorry. Um, I you know I'm coughing, I have a little bit of fever, so I'm calling my doctor. It's not for specialists. For specialists, the system oh, is more okay, I see. Mm -hmm. the okay, system I is see. more complicated. If, and usually there is a doctrine that the specialist the specialist needs to see you because he cannot diagnose a cancer or some lymph, some more difficult problems without seeing me. But the first uh, approach, first touch doctor can tell me, all right, Mr. Sadowski, don't be afraid. It's a normal symptom of, of, a, of a casual um, um, of a casual problem. Like uh, you can, you will get your prescription. Please go to the medical, um, to the pharmacy, buy this and that medical medicament, and uh, you can call me next few days or another doctor. So it's for the basic um, things. But what uh, you okay. might like. Just yeah. another question again. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm asking no, too no, many no, questions. No, 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 no. for you here. Uh, please answer um, your question. Is it somehow connected to the data, um, for example, about you? I don't know how it is in the Poland. In Armenia, for example, you have your, uh, I don't know how your book, uh, how we can yes, say it. Your like, book. As your um, book where there is about your weight, about your previous um, health issues that you are facing. Yes. For example, if you have allergy to some med uh, medical uh, stuff, they, it's also written, uh, written there. So is this somehow connected to that platform or you just need to tell it to the doctor or how, how this is arranged? Well, this is, uh, uh, this is, can you hear me? Yeah, I do. Yes. So this is a very good question, and thank you for this question. So of course, um, uh, I am. I was born in 1984. Lots of my medical data are in paper from my school, from my early childhood, from my uh, growing up period, and these data are not digitalized yet. But uh, if, when I become a father, my child will have all of his or her medical data in this online book that you have described, that you have in Armenia. And every doctor can have access to it, of course. And uh, it should be not my problem to secure this data. This is very secret data. It's one of the most delicate data. Uh, you, some, uh, some illnesses probably I don't want to reveal to my colleagues or to co corporations. So here is the government taking care of, of the protection of it. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And if meeting with my doctor gives a result that the doctor believes that I need to take a leave for one week from my from my work, I get a, um, a medical um, health leave electronic version, which I receive on my email, but also my employer receives the same uh, medical leave 
prescription and my uh, my insurance, our public insurance office, the office that the, the, the public office that pays for for uh, sick leaves, it also gets the information. So there is no chance that the system will not recognize that I was legitimately lying in my bed for seven days because I was ill and the doctor decided to uh, to uh, keep me at home for some time. And now with a very um, good transition from the general description of the Polish instruments for e-administration, I can go to my probably favorite <laughs> element. Uh, I'm saying it with a sorrow and with a sadness. I would far more prefer not to experience COVID at all, but because COVID is fact and Poland has a quite big number of infections, um, the administration speeded up significantly in terms of new solutions for uh, using e-platforms, public e-platforms. The first one is gov.pl. Please see again that it's gov.pl, the hub, the main place where I should go with every topic I have related to administrative um, uh, or health topics. So gov.pl gov slash coronavirus. It's a Polish description. It's not English. Coronavirus in Polish. And this, this place is super popular. Everybody who have any symptoms is going there to check what symptoms um, are adequate to, to what kind of pro next procedure. And thanks to this solution it, itself, only this solution, people are being uh, quarantined if necessary, or they get a prescription for test or they get a uh, information how the ambulance can come and how to link with the proper medical service that it next to your neighborhood and can help you. And also all of the newest information for WHO, World Health Organization and ECDC are also uh, placed there. So this is like anti fake news website for coronavirus. Really great solution. I use it a few times for myself. Luckily, I didn't have coronavirus and for my parents because they, they, they are not that good in internet. So I did it for them. What is more, um, this uh, service allows children to, to connect and to ask about situation of their parents, how, how they should behave. So it's also good because um, it's not that only individual person can talk about his or her situation. Another tool that I want to mention is the home quarantine. This is a tool which also has a, a mobile app that allows a policeman, for example, to check if you are keeping your quarantine and if you are still at home when you should be at home and when you should keep your virus in your apartment, not to spread it in, in the neighborhood. Uh, so this home quarantine was a tool recommended by the government. It's not necessary to have it, but it's recommended. And it works very closely to another application that I mentioned lower. It's called Stop COVID, Pro Go Safe, uh, um, Pro Go Safe. And this application helps uh, the government and the people to watch how the disease spreads out, in which parts of uh, your neighborhood, of your society, of your community, the virus is particularly present. And it works on platform of Android and uh, mobile uh, platforms of uh, Apple. Uh, so um, this is also very, I don't have it personally, so I cannot give a testimony how it works, but th that is uh, uh, quite popular and I know people are using that. The next element that I want to mention is the contact center. This is the one mentioned on the bottom of my slide. This solution uh, lets people to contact 24 uh, hours a day, every day in a week with a specialist and with a, um, a station for uh, epidemic uh, um, for epidemic management. It's called Sanepid in Poland uh, to understand where uh, can I get a physical assistance when, when it's very needed. Imagine my situation is very horrible. I have a strong fever for a few days. So this is an emergency uh, contact. And of course there is a chat. It starts with a chat bot. Then if you have some more precision questions you need you, you can you can go to a person who will who will talk to you or who will chat to you and uh, 
I don't know uh, how popular this, I could not, could not find the information how popular this contact center is, but it's good that uh, every everyone in Poland right now has this um, this uh, directions to this service in uh, in in our handy um, in our uh, mobile phones and uh, it is just I, you don't need to think you just act if you feel bad you can act immediately you don't need to make research you don't need to have computer the the telephone is enough and on the right on the left side of my of my screen I also um, decided to show you one uh, short information about something that is called the crisis shield, the crisis economical shield. In Polish, it's tarcza antykryzysowa, anti-crisis shield. Shield like the, the warrior uh, has a sword and a shield, the, the protective shield. This is a nickname of, this, of the set of solutions that helps our, our uh, businesses and our entrepreneurs to deal with public aid, with public support, with money that can rescue your business during the coronavirus times. For example, the cinemas in Poland have been closed, and theaters and gastronomy and um, groceries, maybe groceries not, but uh, restaurants have been closed for some time. And uh, entrepreneurs were suffering um, um, severe damage, economical damage. So also there was one stop shop for all entrepreneurs to check what kind of subsidy the government, the European Union um, and the government can give him or her uh, because of the fact that um, the business cannot receive clients and receive payments from the clients. And um, the, the, the next slide that looks very similar, but it has different data, uh, shows uh, additional, additional um, GovPL services related to the COVID situation. So first one, it's cloud services provision system. This service is helping um, uh, helping public offices to get their cloud solutions. Uh, and um, imagine for a second how big country Poland is. We have so many municipalities, we have so many little cities, we have 16 big cities like metropolis, maybe metropolis, but cities uh, very close to the size of Erevan. So most of them are smaller than Erevan, but, uh, but they are, let's say, similar, import, very important cities in Poland. Uh, and it's very hard for offices who were surprised with COVID to get their own set of electronic tools. Thanks to this cloud service provision system, in Polish it's called Zuch, Z-U-C-H, we pronounce it Zuch, but for you it's cloud service provision system. It enables offices to acquire certain goods, certain electronic goods for their own offices. Because government cannot go to every office in Poland physically and order the director of an office to implement given solution. Every director, every manager of every office in Poland is linked to the system and can order in a super easy way from the national cloud, from the general cloud of Poland. I know that Microsoft is providing lots of solutions here, can get tools that they need to uh, inter, um, to um, uh, inter, interconnect, to uh, interact, interact with, with citizens. The next one, the next actually two solutions, I uh, used to show you, to, sh to, to let you understand how Poland moved very fast, very quickly from normal lessons that takes place in school or at, at, uh, in a children's garden or at university from offline to, on to online. So uh, gov.pl. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I have again question. Yes. Um, uh, I would like to know, that just came to my mind, uh, I haven't thought about it beforehand, but for the moment I was thinking like, uh, what, uh, I just want your opinion about that. Uh, what about the application or something that, for example, people who have already passed coronavirus, um, actually they can visit theaters, they can visit museums. So 
uh, if there will be just some kind of system that will give opportunity and thus we will save the businesses too. For example, like we have already 30% of population that has already part coronavirus, past coronavirus, and mm -hmm. they are not spread to the community. Uh, so they are allowed to visit the theater. And once you uh, go to, to the theater, you just, um, I'm sorry, once you go to the theater, you they have an application. They just uh, like uh, type your name, or there is some QR code that give them information. For example, that you have past coronavirus and you can go to the theater to the cinema. All right. So, so, so totally, we will not like shut down the whole, uh, the whole business. They will like work for some uh, people, and anyway, they will have some income at least. Okay, I understand the question. So Poland decided to go with a different path. I think more conservative one. Um, the fact that you went through coronavirus and you have been healed, you are already after coronavirus, does not give you um, much uh, or many additional privileges to go to theaters or to the cinemas. Because I think, I think the doctrine in Poland is that no matter the fact that I, for example, I went successfully and luckily uh, I went through coronavirus in July 2020, it does not mean that I can get uh, uh, infected again in February 2021. So uh, I think that this, this system that you described that works in Armenia uh, will just be this doesn't created. work in Armenia. This is just my idea for the moment. That ah, came to idea. Mind. Okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sorry, I misunderstood you. Uh, so um, uh, this is a good idea, but uh, the, the 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 difficulty in making this decision from your uh, high administrative level would be, in my opinion, as follows: Can we have certainty that Sadovsky, Maciej Sadovsky? who lives in Erevan recently because he moved there with his family. Uh, it does the fact that he already went through coronavirus makes him really immune from another coronavirus incidents. If there will be good data from WHO, World Health Organization, that okay, Sadowski is not, it's not a spreader anymore. That would be good. But I think in Poland, we are looking closely at uh, Israel a, uh, situation. They are uh, having lots of vaccinations and uh, the big percentage of the population is already vaccinated for the second time with AstraZeneca or with Pfizer. And uh, they are they are probably investigating uh, how good, uh, how uh, effective this vaccination um, uh, system is. Because uh, I've heard about cases in Poland, then somebody had coronavirus in summer 2020 and right now in early um, spring or, or late winter of 2021, they got infected again. They, they still can get a positive test. But, uh, but yes, I've heard about such ideas. It's not a rule in Poland yet. It's not working in Poland yet, but I've heard these are the plans. It also should increase the readiness of citizens to go to vaccine to go to vaccinate themselves, because in Poland for several months we have 40 40 40 percent of people who declared that they don't want to get vaccination. They want to they don't they are not interested, and the government of course wanted to attract them to uh, to get vaccinations. I think it's also a topic of fake news and lots of very. Uh, unreliable information in Polish uh, internet sphere uh, with with some uh, stupid lies that uh, that vaccination can change your genetic genome or genetic code uh, all of these are disqualified but you know how the gossips and fake news are spreading fast far faster than normal information so I think this is a task for the next months for Polish administration and if you are interested in that and you have time to observe Polish experiments on this field, I will be super happy to provide you more information, let's say in June or July, when we will have a significant part of our population already vaccinated. I will observe, especially for the purpose of your Visegrad 
um, uh, Armenian Visegrad project, how the situation, how the set of tools is being developed, all right? Yes, that will be interesting, thanks. With a pleasure, really with a pleasure. And uh, on, the, on the bottom of this slide, I mentioned a very important tool, super important tool, which was already a uh, character of my uh, story, of my presentation 10, 10 minutes ago. It is called Trusted Profile. Trusted Profile, in a very basic words, it's an equivalent of electric or electronic signature, electronic signature. Uh, I can get this trusted profile, excuse me, for a very little money. And uh, I can do it also via my bank, which is great. I do not need to go outside of my apartment. I can just use the fact that my data, my personal data, name, surname, na name of my mother, name of my father, uh, date of birth, all of the personal data, they are sa safely and um, validly stored in my bank because I use everybody probably or most of people use bank in Poland. And uh, government has this special corridor between private banks and public administration to get the validation. So I don't need to go outside to get my trusted profile. What, do, what can I do with trusted profile? I can sign documents. This is super important. I can sign uh, business contracts. I can sign declarations for public offices. I can sign my uh, personal income tax declaration. I can sign probably most of the things I could possibly imagine with this signature. So this is why okay. only this in few- uh, I'm sorry, this signature doesn't differ from your uh, e-signature, yeah? It is not e-signature, it is equivalent. It's a public equivalent of e-signature. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is, okay. uh, you, you can have, you, you can have um, electric, electronic signature from Oracle, for example, or from any provider, business, pro, uh, commercial provider, but the country decides to make its own service, which is mm -hmm. very, very mm -hmm. affordable. It is affordable for everyone. And going further, I also prepared a short information for you. What are the outcomes so far after the COVID and after the general strategy of digitalization of Polish uh, administrative branch? So the, our, our statistical office, our national statistical office, or it's called central statistical office, said that 42% of people right now aged between 16 and 74 uh, year, years old, which is the majority of citizens in Poland, connected with a public administration via the website. Of course, um, mostly it is true for younger people, 30, 40, 50 years old. Uh, I know that uh, people after 70, after be turning 70, they are not that familiar with this system. But anyway, 42% of this, uh, of this uh, demographic group is already contacting with the administration online. And maybe it is not a spectacular result for Germany. Maybe it's not a spectacular result for Estonia, but for Poland it's magnificent result. It means that, that uh, almost half of the cases that needed to be uh, managed by a physical person in the office right now are being managed online. So the cost of our administration is expected to go down significantly uh, even though the COVID started. The other important data is that the highest percentage of people between 16 and 74, uh, 74 years old uh, was recorded among people working in occupy, occupation related to ICT. So uh, blue collar workers, pe uh, people who are uh, doing some renovations or basic, uh, basic uh, hand related tasks, they are not that present in this group, only 2% of people. Uh, in the last year, when we have recent data from, the percentage of people searching for information in general in public administration website increased uh, two and a half, 2.3 being very precise uh, percentage points, uh, which, is, which is more than expected, it, which is fast, faster than uh, in the seasons before COVID. Of course, COVID was the natural 
uh, ally here of this digitalization. And the last data I prepared for you is that 90% of people has, has access to internet already. Uh, I will tell you something that um, was a very smart um, design of our former governments. Uh, every new user of internet, every person who is paying his or her invoices, um, bills for internet services in last years could have a significant tax cut thanks to that. So uh, I do not apply because I use internet for probably 20 years or something, uh, maybe not 20, but for 17 years for sure. Uh, and But new people, imagine people in the countryside, in mountains, people who do not have great experiences with internet, if only they start being internet users for the first time in given year and the second year after it, they get a significant tax cut. Taxes, nobody wants to pay taxes, we know that, so that was a very good incentive for people to, uh, to uh, use internet. And the density, the saturation of internet over 90% right now is a significant success for Poland. Here, I would like to conclude because of the time frames, and I know I'm speaking already too long, uh, oh, like very long. Uh, I would like to go briefly, if you can give me additional 10 minutes, into the second it's element. Continue. Excuse please me, continue. sir? Please continue, it's fine. Yes, thank you, thank you, sir. And I apologize all the members of the meeting for, for such a long uh, presentation. Uh, I, really, I really do. I wanted to give you a short uh, highlight on the ICT sector in Poland. So I believed that kind of unique presentation from my side for you will go from the perspective of, of demand of ICT expertise and supply of ICT expertise. The first slide is dedicated to supply, so the pool, pool of expertise in ICT. In Poland, we have 1.4 million students. Uh, it's right now a little bit less, 1.3 and 5 million students uh, in 2020, but you can see the data from 19 uh, academic year, 18, 19, uh, active students, people who are studying at universities and academias. And every fourth, every fourth of these students is a technical university student. And it's easy for you to imagine because Poland and Armenia are very similar in this respect. We are post-socialist countries and uh, we did not have many, uh, you know, new materials laboratory. We didn't have many uh, chemistry or, or biological laboratories, but lots of children in 80s, in 90s, did have a computer at home or parents have computer. This is why most of our engineering uh, specializations are related to ICT. We benefit a lot from it. We are one of the strongest market of ICT in the world right now, not only in terms of uh, quantity, because India and China will always overrank us, but in terms of quality. There are several independent rankings that shows that Polish Belarusians, Ukrainians are among top uh, nationalities uh, uh, of ICT. And once we understand the huge pool of ICT specialists in Poland, every year, every year, new uh, quarter million of specialists uh, ready to work in ICT branch, I wanted to show you this uh, 10 players, categories of players in our R&D sector. So uh, apart from technical universities and uh, every almost every good university has something that is called technology transfer center or center for technology transfer. This is just a group of officers from given university that helps ICT specialists to protect their intellectual property and to get finances from, for example, business angels or venture capital funds or public subsidies. The special pur purpose vehicles at universities, the third category of supporters of this ICT sector, these are entities that belong to universities, but they can, they can uh, participate in uh, uh, equity share sharehold, which means that my university, University of Warsaw, can be indirectly owner of many startups, co-owner, 10%, 5%, but it can own part of our startup 
startups uh, because of the fact that the technology was developed in, in at university. Innovation brokers are people who are paid by the government just to go from one startup, from one university to, uh, to another venture capital fund or another commercial client, and they have a success fee from bro for brokerage. If I am this kind of broker, I get salary for every successful case of commercialization of technology in Poland. Um, scientific parks, I know in Erevan you have, uh, you have technological park, I visited it, I don't know if it's called technological park, but this big condo with, uh, with startups. Uh, we, we have um, 19 parks like this uh, in every major city in Poland, of course, alongside with incubators and accelerators. About seed capital and venture capital funds, I will have a separate slide. So let me please hold on here right now. I will go further and I will uh, cover this element of venture capital, uh, ICT investments in, in, uh, in, in, in five minutes. So. I described in my former slides the supply, the pool of talents. Right now, I would like to focus on demand, on um, the, let's say, readiness to accept, to absorb specialists from ICT. So um, 10 years ago, we had only five international R&D centers of big corporations in Poland. Right now, we have more than 50 in Poland, and uh, these uh, companies are located in Poland and they cover with their reg regional interest uh, scope also other countries, usually Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Ukraine, Belarus, sometimes Baltic states, sometimes Balkan states, um, um, Armenia and Georgia uh, are never in this group, Us usually um, they go with with Russian headquarters, but sometimes sometimes not. Uh, and um, the important element is that Polish engineers who graduated from ICT departments at universities, they know that the work work is waiting for them. The earnings of young 23, 26 years old ICT specialist, it's so hi that i am actually envious i am um i am um uh, i feel personal envi uh, enviousness uh, when i see how much a young developer can earn this is one of the blockade for people to leave poland immediately after getting their graduation in the 90s and the beginning of 21st century poland was the second most drained country in European Union, just after Romania. It means that lots, lots of talented people, girls and boys, were going to Great Britain or to France or to Germany or even to United States and Canada immediately after graduation. So we have this paradox that Polish taxpayer is giving lots of money for universities that in Poland are public. Uh, most of them are public and you can have your studies for free. You don't need to pay for your studies. The taxpayer is paying for your studies. Uh, and after graduation, they were immediately going to another country, which was an obvious uh, loss for our for our um, ecosystem, for our economy. This is why the government, uh, with my humble support, has designed a program. It's called the Prize, Poland Prize. It's a non-equity program for startups in ICT from neighboring countries from Belarus, from Ukraine, from Czech Republic, but also from Sweden, from Denmark, from Austria, from Germany, if they like. Also, we had some uh, teams from uh, Armenia and even one team from Azerbaijan, uh, several teams from Georgia. These people are coming because they are attracted to get 24 months long European Union visa. They get money for soft landing, so they can get hotel for free, they can get uh, taxi or bus tickets for free. They can uh, travel to Poland for free. They can, uh, the program can cover their flight ticket. So, and then they enjoy acceleration program, uh, which contains mentoring, which contains uh, experiments with corporations and which contains meetings with capital provider like venture capital funds. Why I'm saying that it is because not only Poland created with uh, humble support of my organization the model of attracting great brains, great minds from abroad, but also recently the uh, Kingdom of Thailand 
the Thailand uh, came to us asking if we can design a program for them because they also feel that many people from Thailand are going to China or to um, Burma or to um, Philippines or Indonesia or Singapore in particular to work there. So I know it's not exactly the topic that Mr. Chairman requested me to cover, but I wanted to use this 10 seconds to attract you, Armenia, to also design your own program to attract talents from abroad, young engineers who want to create a startup. They could create startup in the beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, country of Armenia uh, with a beautiful view to the mountains and uh, they don't need to necessarily go to US. I believe you can attract many people from Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, from Russia, from Georgia, uh, even from Poland. I believe that uh, people would like to go just to have two years for developing their technology. Most of them will stay in the country, will create families, will get networked uh, with local people, will create businesses, will pay taxes. So it's very valuable, but it's, it's, it's going very much again against this thinking that only your citizens can work in your in your country in poland luckily uh, no matter if we have left-wing government liberal government or right-wing government everybody agrees on that we need to attract talents from abroad and if um, ict startup is already a bit developed it can get fifty thousand euro each startup a non-returnable subsidy to develop prototype in cooperation with corporate, with corporation, with Siemens, with Philips, with Polish companies, with Sony, with Nokia, with Huawei, with whatever big company the startup wants to work with, but in Poland. And uh, the results of our attempts to make Polish sector of ICT a little bit more internationalized, a little bit more diverse, I can show you this graph that I took from the Polish Agency of International Trade. Uh, I like this graph very much. It shows that not only Polish uh, ICT engineers are working in Poland to build all of this e electronic infrastructure, but also people from Ukraine, Belarus and Russia. I was surprised to see Brazil as number five on this, on this, uh, on this chart. Um, recently, uh, my foundation got 11% of applications, of startup applications from Israel, which is an indicator that our country became, and I'm sorry for my phraseology, but sexy. The country became sexy, the country became appealing, and the country became a place where international talents went, want, want to work and build those solutions, ICT solutions. One of the examples of what we have achieved in last five months is Poland Business Harbor. Please, uh, please see that this website, this uh, program is based, no, I'm sorry, the number 14 on the left top button of my presentation covers, it's gov.pl, gov.pl, again, the hub for e-services of our country, the, the main website. Sorry, I covered it with a number, uh, but it's, believe me, it's gov.pl. On gov.pl websites, every Belarusian engineer could apply for a soft landing program in Poland. And month, my foundation, Startup Hub Poland, was responsible to fundraise from our private sector, from our public sector, small money, 5,000 euro or something, to give uh, pocket money to those startups. Just come to Poland. Don't, uh, don't um, um, jeopardize your risk. Uh, don't jeopardize your company in Belarus when the, uh, when the political situation and the police police activities are so strong and so disappointing for many engineers. And then I promised you to cover two another sectors. One is fintech, ICT is strong in fintech, and the second one is venture capital's uh, landscape. So it will take me one minute each. In terms of fintech, this is an interesting story for Armenia. We were one of the less developed, the least developed, the the, the uh, the weakest country in the world in terms of electronic financial products. And we decided to make an experiment. Our governments, former governments, previous government says, okay, we want to be a sandbox, a playing ground 
for international banks to experiment with new products online. And right now in year 2022, we are expected to be the contactless payment uh, uh, penetration market, biggest uh, pay, uh, count, count, um, contactless payment penetration market in the world. Right now we are number three, I believe. So um, because of the fact that right now everybody has a bank account and mobile uh, banking on a mobile phone and some virtual cards, everything you can, you can go to the smallest city and you can buy apples on a regional marketplace where old grandma or old grandpa is selling uh, his goods, his or her uh, fruits, paying with a card which makes Poland right now a super good magnet for uh, international banks and for startups that are developing solutions for ICT. Uh, I don't need to mention that you can also deal with our government. You can pay your uh, fiscal um, re responsibilities, fiscal, fiscal uh, duties to the government online by few clicking. Of course, the government made it super easy to pay money to government. So that was probably the priority number one, to let me, a private person, to pay money to my government, to the general Polish budget very, very easily. And the last slide, and uh, uh, I will conclude here, is the venture capital market. Why have I chosen venture capital market as a finishing slide of my presentation? It is because I'm a great fan of looking at digital transformation of every country from the perspective of private interest, private interest of funds that want to invest money on a very early stage of startup development and become rich eventually after five, six years when the startup reaches a very high valuation level. Um, 10 years ago, almost nobody in Poland heard about this brand, this, uh, this uh, company called CD Project Red. It was a small game developing company in, from Warsaw, very small. Right now, this company alone has higher valuation than all energy companies in Poland. Energy companies that, that have 100 years of, of uh, uh, legacy, 100 years of history. And when it is because the venture capital uh, funds founded out, founded out the opportunity in Polish markets, uh, Polish budget, Polish public agencies are very active in supporting startups with non-equity, non-returnable subsidies. But this is never enough. The state, the administration is never smarter than the market in my opinion. This is why our government invited venture capital funds to invest in startups. And the government said, okay, Mr. Venture Capital Man Managing Partner, if you invest in 10 startups, $1 million, uh, $1 million to each startup, the government will give another $1 million subsidies. And thanks to this alliance, the government does not need to think which startup deserves a support, which startups uh, is good enough, has a good quality to get this money, not to be just, you know, spending money uh, stupidly just to young companies because they are fashionable and cool. No, if the venture capital fund says that the company is worthy private investment, the, the country, the public sector is coming and saying, okay, this gentleman or this lady has decided that this startup is a good investment. The country joins this investment. We give additional $1 million to this investment or 50% of the investment. Actually, it's Israeli. Uh, this model comes from Israel and from Switzerland, two benchmarks that we were heavily uh, observing while we were developing around 15 years ago our venture capital market, or rather maybe 12 years ago. Uh, right now, the venture capital market in Poland uh, fundraises 21 billion Polish zloty, which is what? Which is 4.5 billion euro uh, to invest in startups. And uh, we are the biggest venture capital market in Central Eastern Europe, even bigger than Russia. So uh, mm, I cannot, I cannot 
stress, uh, stretch enough the necessity of attracting venture capital companies. They are really a huge supporter for public uh, processes, for public projects and for our local talents who we want to keep in, in country, not let them go immediately after graduation to America, to Silicon Valley, for example. So thank you very much again. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman and all of you, uh, our, my kind uh, uh, co-seminarists for being so extensive, but uh, it was our first meeting. So I believe uh, you, you wanted to get a bigger picture than a smaller picture. Thank you and I'm, I'm over. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your presentation. And our, I'm inst your questions. Yes. Uh, our institution's expert will later prepare a policy paper based on uh, several seminars like this, unfortunately had to see a doctor today, so she's not here. So we may move on to the questions from the audience. But I will just make a comment because this is not exactly my field of expertise, but you mentioned that 40% now are against vaccination in Poland. And used to be, used to be, used to be. Uh, uh, luckily, the the uh, information in media and in social media changed it. Right now, more people want to vaccinate, but it was yeah. a problem. Yeah, but uh, just some months ago, I read a paper that it was approximately 40 40 something in whole central europe and in romania bulgaria balkans so more or less similar stories were spread and uh, more or less the same number of people yes. had such feelings and uh, now i would like to ask our participants to make comments or ask questions because that's their professional field And I will use the chat in the meanwhile to leave my contact uh, uh, information, okay? Here is the slide. Uh, I, I hope you can still see it. Uh, well, I... But I will, yes. I will, I will write it down. Uh, yes, it should be, all, again, possible to share screen. Uh, yeah, the email appeared in chat, yes. Okay, these are my contact uh, data, but I'm also using chat to uh, to let you uh, have my phone number so we can talk on, on for example, um, uh, Telegram or WhatsApp or just by phone. Call. Yeah, that will be great. I will try to not to disturb you so much. Just the several links that I might need or just several questions that I might just go on. I would like to go with you further. Of course. Uh, so, uh, well, let's continue with questions now, as we still have time. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Um, I got a technical question, maybe it's probably addressed to Mr. Grigorian. Um, can we have the record of this presentation because it was pretty informative? Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I, I'll share the link to the video and uh, we may also get the presentation hopefully itself. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, any questions from the audience? I have another one, but um, so far it's like we have the same situation in Armenia, like uh, 
not uh, most of the people are not using uh, uh, yes services and uh, most people who use them are the people who are in IT sector and um, how you are trying to uh, teach people and how you are trying to move to digital society I mean like um, are you doing some trainings uh, um, what measures do you take uh, to make old people, um, no, let's say not old, but people who are of um, higher age to uh, to trust uh, e-services and to try to work with them. All right. So um, a big role in this process belongs to municipalities. Uh, I have a living gram grandmother and she participated in 2018 in a 16 sessions for internet um, as for internet group for seniors and the municipality paid for these sessions paid for trainers to uh, assemble group of 10 or 15 seniors senior people to uh, get accustomed with with basic tools of internet not only public uh, solutions, public tools, administ e administration, e-governance tools, but also uh, Facebook, uh, email box, uh, chat, uh, browsers. So uh, right now I can connect with my grandma and, and talk to her online, and she's also able to get her prescription online. So mainly the municipalities uh, are helping with this mentoring. Okay, I see. And later, do you have some statistics? Uh, how many of them or uh, how many of them are using the services? So to to see like uh, how mm -hmm. efficient it is, because they might like be uh, might be present at the studies, but later they will not just use it. Okay, uh, I don't have the statistics right now. But I can link you with a gentleman from the municipality of Warsaw, who I work with, and he's responsible for this kind of uh, uh, formats for senior people. Mm -hmm. Not only he will be able to send you the data, the statistical data that you, uh, you are willing to know, but also maybe some presentations of, of the programs for senior people. And, mm, yeah, and not only for great. senior people, mm -hmm. because uh, also people from uh, from uh, smaller municipalities, they are also not very aware of, yeah, they, they used to be not very aware of internet. So uh, I will make this link afterwards, okay? I will, if you send me an email with your contact, uh, with your email address, I will make an introduction to the gentleman from the municipality of Warsaw, if it's okay for you. Thanks a lot, of course. Thanks for your help. Welcome. And, okay, uh, I get it. Uh, I have a little question. So, uh, how about uh, retirement benefits in Poland? Does everybody get it to their bank accounts, or how does it work? Because in Armenia, there is such a possibility, but still, a lot of older people go to the post office or to the bank and uh, stay in queue just in order to get cash from their pension account. So, yes, uh, has uh, has uh, this uh, you know card ownership or using electronic banking being promoted or how it could be perhaps? So the same in Poland. Uh, lots of people are receiving their uh, their retirement um, uh, money from the government through the post office. Either they are going uh, to the physical to the physical stationary office of a bank or the postman. The postman gives brings money in cash and takes the, the confirmation that given senior received uh, payment. And uh, I know that there is a uh, information uh, program, a information, um, uh, how to say, a project to attract people to use bank accounts older people to use bank accounts, um, but uh, I don't really know what are the effects of this of this uh, attempts. I just know that still in many places in Poland, a post of postmen, post officers are going with a heavy bag loaded with uh, mails and with money in cash to give the older people their retirement money. 
So very similar like in Armenia. Uh, Poland is very flat, so the transportation costs are not that big, but I can imagine that uh, in, in Armenia where a uh, significant pa part of the country is, uh, is uh, surrounded by mountains, and there are lots of rural places in the high mountains, it might be more disadvantageous for people to, to wait for the postman or to go to the bank. Uh, so uh, the answer to you, sir, is that yes, there, there is some information action performed by the, by, by the government and by banks. Please go online and get your money online. Uh, thank you. So, uh, any other question, maybe, from the audience? If, uh, if there are no questions, we may perhaps uh, continue by email, or we can stay in touch With and... Pleasure. Uh, With pleasure. And, uh, uh, please uh, share the, uh, the presentation file, which I may forward to our participants as well. And uh, I may also share the, this discussion video. And if uh, there are no questions, uh, then I would like to thank you, Mr. Sadowski, and uh, to thank all the participants for thank joining for us today. And I believe this was a useful discussion and we will continue exploring this topic and uh, we also plan to publish a paper about this. And please stay in touch and certainly we can learn from some Polish experiences and uh, maybe some mutual exchange of experiences as well would be Most possible. Most certainly, especially in terms of startups and high tech. I, I volunteer to, to work with you. Uh, there are lots of things that I believe Armenia and Poland together can do in particular, not only Armenia and Visegrad uh, four, Visegrad uh, countries, but Armenia and Poland in particular. We have quite a good communication with Georgia. So uh, I think there is a low hang, there are low hanging fruits that we can harvest together in in next seasons. So thank you very much for having me, Mr. Chairman, and all of you uh, kind participants. Uh, I uh, offer my contact information, and I'm willing to to be in touch with you. Of course, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Have a nice day, and mm -hmm. I thank again all the participants. Uh, have a nice day. We will stay in touch, and we'll exchange some information in the future as well. So. Uh, we'll try to develop this sector further. There's a lot of work has been done, but uh, still there's always something to learn and to improve. Thank you, have a nice day. Thanks everyone. Thank have you. a nice day.